Reading students and welcome back to another video on special relativity. In this lesson, I'm going to discuss and derive the Lorentz transformations. But before I talk about the Lorentz transformations, I want to first discuss the Galilean transformation. Suppose I have a reference frame R that I'll describe using the XYZ coordinate system with a time t. Suppose also that I have another reference frame R prime, which I'll describe using this primed coordinate system with time t prime. Let's also say that this reference frame r prime is traveling at a velocity of v in the x direction relative to the reference frame r. At time zero, however, these reference frames line up perfectly. If I now put an event e over here with an x coordinate, y coordinate, z coordinate, and time t in the reference frame r, and an x prime, y prime, z prime coordinate with a time t prime in the reference frame r prime, then the Galilean transformation allows me to determine the relationship between the unprimed coordinates and the primed coordinates. Now, the time t prime and t are the same. In classical mechanics, five seconds elapsed in R is the same as five seconds elapsed in the reference frame R prime. The same applies for the y and z coordinates. They're both equal to their primed counterparts because the reference frame R prime is not traveling in the y and z direction, it's only traveling in the x direction. The x-coordinate of this event, however, is different between the two reference frames because r prime is traveling at a velocity of v in the x-direction. So the x prime coordinate in the r prime frame is going backwards after starting from a point where it was lined up with x. How quickly is it going backwards? Well, it's going backwards at the speed of the reference frame r prime, which is just v. So we can say that x prime equals x minus vt. These four comprise the equations for the Galilean transformation, which allows us to transform coordinates between two reference frames in a Newtonian mechanics framework. However, the equations for the Lorentz transformation are different because these guys allow us to transform coordinates between reference frames in a special relativity framework. And there are many, many ways to derive the Lorentz transformations. I'm gonna derive them from the principles of time dilation and length contraction. You can, of course, derive them from other principles and then derive time dilation and length contraction from there, but this derivation method, I think, makes more sense in the context of what we've learned so far. Now, to perform this derivation, let's take the same reference frames R and R prime and have R prime once again moving at the velocity of V relative to R in the X direction. At time zero, we reset the clocks in both reference frames and start everything from that point, and we line up our reference frames at that time zero. Now in this drawing I've shown reference frame R and R prime vertically displaced from each other uh, just for ease of depiction, but you can imagine that R and R prime are actually lined up at time t equals zero, and R prime is only moving in the horizontal x direction uh, when we turn on the time, basically. So let's start with the easiest equations for the Galilean transformation. Between the reference frames, there's no relative motion in the y or z direction, so the y and z remain equal to their prime counterparts. The reference frames are fully lined up at the start, and the origin of r prime only travels in the x direction relative to r. Therefore, y prime equals y, and z prime equals z. If you don't believe that this is true, let me go on the side to help cast away your doubt. Let's take two rectangular boxes A and B of roughly the same size. Have one, let's say A, move towards the right one B in the x direction at a velocity of V, while B remains stationary relative to the ground. The stationary box has its own stationary reference frame P, while the moving box has a reference frame P prime. Let's suppose that there was some transformation between Y prime and Y such that Y prime and Y weren't always equal. We could assume, for instance, that the transformation caused the moving box to shrink in the Y direction, relative to the stationary box. If that were the case, then according to box B, box A would be shrunken in the y direction and would then be able to fit inside box B in that direction. However, according to box A, box B is also moving towards it, so box B would be shrunken in the y direction relative to box A as well, and would then be able to fit inside box A. So both boxes are simultaneously smaller than each other and are able to fit inside each other which is kind of weird. In fact, it's so weird that it's simply not possible. We can't have both boxes transform such that they fit inside each other. 
There's no relativity of simultaneity here to save us. Events that are spatially separated in the y direction are perceived as simultaneous in both reference frames. It's not like simultaneity in the y direction is perceived differently. Therefore, the y prime and y coordinates must be the same while one box is traveling in the x direction relative to the other. I can make the exact same argument for the z coordinate also, so just like y prime and y, z prime and z are equal. By the way, this is called the symmetry argument. Anyway, we've shown the relationships for the uninvolved coordinates y and z. Let's go back to the important coordinates x and t for the Lorentz transformation. Suppose there's some event f that occurs at some random time after time zero, so after we've lined up our two reference frames r and r prime. The space-time coordinates of f and r are x comma t, while those in r prime are x prime comma t prime. Note that I'm ignoring the y and z coordinates here because they're equal in both reference frames. Let's suppose that the origin of r is O and that the origin of r prime is O prime. And let's create a couple of vector equations using these three points, O, O prime, and f. According to both reference frames r and r prime, we can write the vector OF as O, O prime plus O prime f. Now, O, O prime looks like it's a vertical vector, but in reality, because the two reference frames are initially lined up, and because R prime is only traveling in the X direction, O, O prime is actually a horizontal vector. It just looks like a vertical vector in the diagram that I drew, which again, I drew for ease of depiction because it would be hard to make things out when both reference frames are exactly overlapping. Anyway, OF is equal to OO prime plus O prime F. I'll call this equation 1. Now the next few statements are important, and I'm going to be emphasizing which reference frame these statements will be relative to, so pay close attention. In the reference frame R, OF is just the position of event F relative to O, which is X. OO prime is the position of the origin of R prime relative to O, which is just the velocity of the reference frame R prime, times the time elapsed t according to the reference frame r. Now, that just leaves the distance O prime f. Well, relative to r, how would you find O prime f? As I mentioned earlier, the x-coordinate of f relative to O prime is x prime. However, that x-coordinate corresponds to the reference frame r prime. It's not relative to the reference frame r. If we want to find the distance between f and o prime according to the reference frame r, we'll have to use length contraction. By the principle of length contraction, the length measured between o prime and f in the reference frame r is given by the proper length, which is the x prime as mentioned earlier, divided by the Lorentz factor gamma. And this is from length contraction. So if we apply the vector equation 1, then according to reference frame r, x equals vt plus x prime over gamma. I'm going to call this equation 2. So we've talked about what the distances and vectors look like in the reference frame r. Let's now talk about what everything looks like in the reference frame r prime. What's the distance of in the reference frame r prime? Well, it isn't simply x because that's the distance of in the reference frame r. It's x divided by gamma in the reference frame r prime because we have to apply length contraction r is moving relative to r prime. So while the proper length is x, we have to divide the x by gamma because we want to measure this length relative to r prime. Meanwhile, o o prime is v times t prime. I've used t prime here because t prime is the time measured by the clock in the reference frame r prime, while t is the time measured in the reference frame r. So whenever we bring in a time term for r prime, we have to use t prime just because that's the appropriate time variable to use. And then finally, o prime f is just x prime, pretty much by definition. If we now apply equation 1, then we get the following relationship between the distances in the reference frame r prime. And I'm going to call this relationship equation 3. Let's now solve equations 2 and 3 for our unknown quantities x prime and t prime. We'll start with equation 2, where we can just directly get x prime, which turns out to be gamma times x minus vt. If we then plug this into equation 3, this is what we'll get. And if we now isolate the t prime, we end up with the following. And then we can take gamma common to get gamma times t plus x over v gamma squared minus x over v. 
Now remember that gamma is just 1 over the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared. It's the Lorentz factor. So this 1 over gamma squared term in the middle is just 1 minus v squared over c squared. When we expand out this middle term in the parentheses, the 2x over v's cancel, leaving us with the following. So in summary, these are the Lorentz transformation equations for coordinate transformations in special relativity between two inertial reference frames r prime and r, with r prime traveling in the x direction relative to r. Of course, if we wanted to go from the primed reference frame to the unprimed reference frame, we could rearrange everything and get the inverse Lorentz transformation. I invite you to show that these four equations comprise the inverse Lorentz transformation. Anyway, that should do it for this video. I'd like to thank the following patrons for supporting me at the $5 level or higher, and if you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe. This is the Faculty of Khan, signing out.